Let's discuss using EIGRP for our dynamic multipoint VPN. So using EIGRP as the uh, main routing protocol to uh, send over prefixes over DMVPN. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have a basic knowledge of what DMVPN is. Um, for my example, I'm just going to use a simple network that consists of three routers, with router one being the hub and we will use the 123 network as our MBMA network, so the physical network, and the 101123 network will be the uh, network configured on our tunnel interfaces. So with DMVPN, we basically have three phases. I'm going to configure each phase separately, with phase one just being a traditional hub and spoke uh, topology and the dynamic part will only come in when we actually configure phase 2 and phase 3 with the difference being between phase 2 and phase 3 is that we configure these redirect settings and shortcut settings on the hub and spokes so the redirect settings is only required on the hub and the shortcut is only required on the spoke it's not necessary to configure shortcut on the spoke on the hub rather and if Later on in this example, I'm going to talk about this EIGP add path supports and the different settings for the next hop self and split horizon rules. So um, I've seen a lot of examples for DMVPN that just disable next hop self and split horizon in any form of configuration. Uh, that will work just fine, but I think it's important to remember or to know why exactly we are disabling Nexop self and split horizon when it comes to DMVPN. So let's get started on this config. I am starting on the hub router, which is router 1, and I'm doing most of this configuration in Notepad. So let's first configure our physical interface, which will be on the 1 through 3 network with a slash 24 mask, no shot here. I'm creating a loopback which is not actually required for the uh, tunnel source. So I'm not sourcing this tunnel from the loopback at all. I'm just using that to sh uh, verify that I have uh, reachability over the tunnel interface. And the next part will be to actually configure the MVPN. And most of that configuration will be done on the actual tunnel interface. So the first thing I would do when creating a tunnel interface is specifying the tunnel source. You can also use an address over here instead of using the physical uh, interface. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. And because we are using, uh, th because this is the hub, I need to manually specify the GRE multipoint mode. So with phase one, our spokes will use just GRE, which is the default mode for a tunnel. And the hub will use GRE multipoint. Then I'm going into the IP NHRP. Uh, configuration and specifying the network ID which is a link is a local identifier so if I use uh, if I let's say I had 10 tunnel interfaces on this hub this is one this is the way to distinguish between them so that's how iOS knows which uh, DMVPN network is used on which tunnel however this net number does need to match on the hub and the spokes even though it is a local significant number one other thing you see quite often configured with DMVPN is the manual configuration of the MTU settings. So with EIGRP and other routing protocols, the neighborship might flat because the MTU for a GRE tunnel is 1476, I believe, by default. So by giving that a lower value, we will not see that happening. The next part would be to configure the IP NHRP map multicast dynamic so because we are using a routing protocol we need to uh, configure the tunnel to uh, send over multicast traffic which it doesn't by default and i'm actually giving this an ip address of the 123 network so that's basically the config for dmvpn and let's get started on the eigrp configuration so i'm using name node for this example it's not required but it will offer some more features such as the add path support, which I'm uh, going to talk about later. So I am manually specifying the networks in this case. Network 10.0.1.2.3.0. 
I'm doing this because I do not want to enable EIGRP on our physical interface. So I want to make sure that we are actually using the tunnel for our EIGRP traffic. And then I'm going to go to my interface tunnel zero and just leave it at that and configure that later. So let's paste that in. And before I want to go start it on the spokes, I actually want to go back in this tunnel interface and show you a couple of options with IP NHRP. So there's a lot of things to configure over here, such as the authentication, which you've probably seen quite often. And I want to talk about this command mainly. So the IP NHRP map, and normally you would see something like uh, 10.0.1.2.3, so the tunnel address, and we are going to map that to the MBMA address of uh, router 1. This command is not actually required. If we can just do this in one line, so if I do IP NHRP next stop server, and then the uh, tunnel address of router one, and over here we can specify the MBMA address again. So if I do that, I do not actually need the uh, IP NHRP map command. It is not required for the spoke. So let me paste that in there for. Uh, for configuring these spokes. So let's get started on that. Uh, let's start with spoke 2. So I do not need this tunnel mode. However, I do need a tunnel destination because we are using phase 1. So the tunnel destination will actually go to the NBMA address of router 1, so not the tunnel address. Instead of mapping multicast dynamic, I'm again mapping that to the NBMA address of router 1. And here we add this IP NHRP next stop server command. So that's basically all there is to configuring router 2 with the addition of changing these addresses around and over here as well. So that's the complete config for router 2. Let's paste that in. And for router 3, I'll only need to change a couple of addresses, which is the main benefit of using the MVPN. We can just change this address to a tree, and we're basically done with the template. And over here it will be a tree. So let me paste that in. So I see two neighborships coming up. So to show IP IGP neighbors, we will have two neighbors on our tunnel interface. Uh, and I will see the routes for the loopbacks of router 2 and router 3. So if I do source loopback 0, I will have reachability. And if I do show IP route EIGRP over here, I will see that I will only have a route to the loopback of router 1. I will not have a route to the loopback of router 3. So the reason why that is, is because a split horizon is enabled by default on this tunnel interface. So if we were using, if we want to get more specific routes, we need to manually disable split horizon on the hub. Uh, with the next next up self command can actually be enabled on uh, the hub when you're using phase one it doesn't matter it doesn't do anything the only thing next up self will do for us is to create dynamic tunnels so that's something we only need when we're using phase two or phase three so instead of like uh, disabling split horizon I can only just I can also create a default summary on the hub so let's do that let me go back in my EIGRP configuration for the tunnel zero. So this is a benefit for using the name mode. We can just configure everything in the name mode configuration. Here I can do summary address and do it all zeros. And the uh, neighbors will resync. And we should get a default route to router one. So if I do trace 192.168.03, sourcing it from my own loopback, I will see that I actually have connectivity. However, I will always go through the hub because no dynamic tunnels have been created. I will also won't see a NHRP registration for router three, only for router one, and I will not I will not see a dynamic tunnel being created here as well. So instead of using the summary address over here, I can actually disable split horizon so i will actually get two resyncs over here and we will see that we have received the address for router three and it will work just fine so that's what split horizon is for 
So let's continue our uh, DMVPN configuration by switching over to phase two. So one other thing that I wanted to show you is the creation of these two dynamic tunnels on the uh, on the hub. And on the hub, we can actually see both spokes and their NHRP registrations. So let's get started on the configuration for uh, phase two. It's very simple. We do not need to change anything on the hub because that is already using a Jiri multipoint. So for the spokes, I need to remove the tunnel destination and then create a tunnel mode Jiri multipoint. That is the only thing required for the spokes. So let me go in my tunnel interface here, paste that in, interface tunnel zero, and paste that in, and we will resync and we should be able to create dynamic tunnels or we will not be able to create dynamic tunnels right now because uh, the next up self function is still enabled on router one so let, let me show you that so I'm on router three right now so if I do trace to the loopback of router two and source it from my own loopback I will see that I actually do have connectivity however I will go through the hub each and every time. So if I do show DMVPN, I will see that I'm not creating any dynamic tunnels whatsoever. So that's one thing you gotta make sure of when you're using phase two, that you actually need to disable next hub self in order to create dynamic tunnels. And I've already disabled split horizon in this case. Uh, with phase two, uh, you, cannot, you can actually uh, originate a default route on the hub however when you do that you will lose the dynamic creation of tunnels so the default summary route is only supported when we're using phase one or phase three which uses the redirect and shortcut settings so let me show you that if i go back in here and actually reinstate my summary address and here i'm going to disable next hub self So without the summary route, so if I do show IP route, the yeah, IP, I will just get a summary route over here and I won't see any other routes. However, if I trace, let's see if I can find it, trace to router tree, I will see that it's actually working. However, we will not create a dynamic tunnel because all traffic is going through this summary route. So only when I take that off, we will actually see the creation of dynamic tunnels. So it will take a little longer the first time and now we can see that we are just one hop away so if I do show DMVPN over here we will see that we actually created a dynamic tunnel and if I do show IP NHRP I'm not 100% sure yeah we see that we have created an IP NHRP registration for router 3 so that's one thing you gotta be aware of that you cannot use the default summary route with phase 2 if we're going to switch over to phase 3, we will actually uh, have that. So before I configure that, I wanted to talk about this uh, add path support for DMVPN. So with name mode configuration, you can actually have a single, uh, up to four additional best paths to be advertised to spokes. And one thing to remember is that we need to disable next hop cell for that, and then we have something called add pad and then the number of pads that we want to add so you can see with no next up self here we can actually add this be behind it so that's what you got to do if you want to create the add pad support and then you just do add pad for however this command is not supported on my platform so i can't really show you that so let's switch over to router uh, let's switch over to phase three I have disabled next up self, I have disabled split horizon, I believe to show run section here HRP will show us. Yeah, it's both disabled right now, so let's go in our tunnel interface and actually switch over to phase three. So the way to do that, I'm just gonna uh, shut it down for now and I'm gonna clear my existing IP and HRP registrations. Then I'm gonna go and configure the redirect settings on the hub and I'll configure the shortcut settings on the spokes. So let me paste this. And I'm already in the tunnel, so let's shut it down. 
let's clear this IP and HRP and here we are entering in the shortcut command same over here and do clear IP and HRP so do show IP and HRP will give us a blank line which is exactly what we want so the first thing that you want to bring up in any uh, in any DMVPN solution is the hub, of course. So let's wait on that until that one comes online, and then we will enable these spokes. Before I do that, I will go in my EIGRP configuration and go back in the tunnel interface and actually originate the default route once more. So no shot here, no shot here. And if I look at my diagram, we can see that we, I've experimented uh, with phase 3 a lot and I can actually leave Nexop self to be enabled when using uh, phase 3. And the same goes for split horizon when we are actually creating a default summary. And we will again disable this when we are using more specific routes. So basically the same as phase 1. Uh, if we are using a summary, uh, a default summary, which I'm doing now, we will actually create dynamic routes using the NHRP protocol. So they won't be EIGRP routes, they will be NHRP routes, which will be uh, used for the more specific destinations. So let's take a look at that. I should have two neighbors once more on router. Do show IP neighbor. I will have two neighbors over here. And if I do show IP route over here, we will see that we have only got a default route to router 1. So if I trace to router 3 again, I will see that I, I am actually creating a dynamic entry in this case. Do show DMVPN, I will see it over here as well. However, if I do a show IP route again, we will see that we have this H route, which is NHRP, which is created. Uh, with an administrative distance of 250 so this will probably be over uh, run by any protocol that exists on iOS so this is a very high administrative distance and we can see that it goes to the tall interface of router 3 so that's that's the route that gives us the direct uh, dynamic tunnel so instead of doing that I can remove my summary address over here and we will resync again however I will have a specific EIGRP route with a distance of 90 so that's what basically removes that NHRP route and it will be the exact same over here with creation of a dynamic tunnel to router 3 so uh, very easy to implement if, and very easy to switch over from phase 2 to phase 3 <coughs> Excuse me. So the only thing to remember is that we only need to redirect on the hub. We need to shortcut on the spokes. And I hope it's become more clear why we are actually disabling the next hub self and split horizon in the first place. So next hub self is just for the creation of the dynamic tunnels, and the split horizon is to receive more specific routes. So that's basically it for EIGRP for DMVPN. Uh, as I said before, I am actually uh, I actually have separate videos about OSPF for DMVPN, ODR, BGP, and RIP. Thank you for your time.